ever wondered about a whimsical world where music, fantasy, and bug-themed characters collide? Perhaps your first encounter with this peculiar universe was during a lazy Sunday afternoon or a late-night TV session. The Bugaloos, a 1970s television series, introduced viewers to a quirky and musically inclined group of insect-like beings navigating the enchanting landscape of Tranquility Forest. As we delve into the lesser-known facets of this timeless show, consider whether you recall the first time you tuned in to witness the Bugaloos' adventures. Was it a nostalgic trip down memory lane or a recent discovery that sparked your interest? Perhaps you've stumbled upon fascinating anecdotes or hidden facts about the production that continue to intrigue you. Now, let's shift our focus to your most cherished memory or personal experience connected to this TV gem. Whether it's a particular episode that left a lasting impression or a nostalgic association with the show's catchy tunes, we invite you to share your Bugaloo stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear about the moments that made this series special for you. And so, let the Bugaloo's whimsy linger as we explore the intriguing facets of this classic TV series. Your tales are the harmonious notes that add to the melody of this fantastical journey. Share your Bugaloo's memories and let the conversations flow. The Bugaloos, a whimsical television series that took flight in the early 1970s, emerged as a musical fantasy adventure aimed at capturing the imaginations of young audiences. Created by Sid and Marty Croft, the show unfolded in the enchanting realm of Tranquility Forest, where four anthropomorphic insect musicians Joy, Harmony, Bubbles, and IQ formed the Bugaloos Band. Living in harmony with nature, the Bugaloos found themselves facing the persistent efforts of the villainous Benita Bazaar, played by Martha Ray, whose comically sinister schemes sought to exploit the Bugaloos' unique talents for her own gain. As a distinctive blend of live action, music, and puppetry, the series showcased a vivid, psychedelic aesthetic reflecting the era's countercultural influences. The Bugaloos' endearing personalities, catchy tunes, and lighthearted escapades resonated with audiences, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape of children's television. Despite its relatively short run, the Bugaloos remains a nostalgic touchstone for those who fondly recall its imaginative narrative and whimsical charm continuing to influence subsequent generations of creators. Sid Croft, co-creator of The Bugaloos, found inspiration for the whimsical television series from his childhood experiences in the circus. Having spent years traveling with a marionette act and living in hotels, Croft developed a deep yearning to connect with nature. This desire led him to set the show in Tranquility Forest, creating a unique and enchanting backdrop for The Bugaloos' musical adventures. In an interesting twist, the set of Benita Bazaar's jukebox had a surprising neighbor the abandoned S Enterprise Bridge from Star Trek. During their downtime on the show, the cast members, drawn by the allure of the iconic sci-fi set, often hung out directly behind Benita Bazaar's jukebox, adding a touch of behind-the-scenes intrigue to the production. The Bugaloo's title had been percolating in the minds of the creators before the series even took flight. In a precursor to the show, the creators had Wichapoo masquerade as Betsy Bugaloo in the film Puff Stuff. This early manifestation of the Bugaloo's concept hinted at the imaginative and quirky direction the series would take. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the creative process and unique elements that contributed to the Bugaloo's charm. From Sid Croft's circus-inspired upbringing to the unexpected proximity of the Star Trek set, the series weaves a fascinating tale that goes beyond its on-screen adventures. Lucille Ball, while shooting Here's Lucy nearby, frequently visited the Bugaloo's set. She particularly admired the Bugaloo's wings, according to John McIndoe. Their flying sequences involve standard harnesses, concealed under the boys' pants, but for Joy's skirt, Caroline Ellis had to master a precarious swing-like flying rig for balance. Despite being signed to Capitol Records, the Bugaloo's album and single for a friend faced little success, leading to their removal from Capitol's artist roster in 1971. Lucille Ball's fascination, the challenges of flying sequences, and the group's musical setbacks offer intriguing insights into the lesser-known aspects of the Bugaloos, adding layers to its 1970s television legacy. Martha Ray's dynamic presence in Sid and Marty Croft's film Puffin Stuff as boss which left a lasting impression on Sid Croft. Despite concerns from his brother Marty about potential challenges on set due to Ray's larger-than-life personality, Sid chose to collaborate with her on the 1970s TV series. This decision shaped the course of the Bugaloos, adding a unique flavor to the show. 
Ray's portrayal of the villainous Benita Bazaar with her comically sinister schemes became a defining element, contributing to the series' charm and success. Walker Edmiston, the voice behind Sparky the Firefly on occasion, further enriched the Bugaloos with his versatile contributions. Edmiston's work provided depth to the characters, enhancing the overall viewing experience for audiences. His role as Sparky added a playful and engaging element to the Bugaloos world, showcasing the collaborative effort that went into crafting the series. Beyond the small screen, the Bugaloos' influence extended to unexpected places. In the 30th issue of the Animaniacs comic book from October 1997, a spoof titled The Warner Bugs paid homage to the iconic 1970s series. Featuring characters Yakko, Wacko, and Dot as flying insects, the spoof not only borrowed elements from the Bugaloos, but also humorously jabbed at the show's songs and star Martha Ray. This intertextual nod highlights the enduring impact of the Bugaloos, transcending its original airtime and resonating with later generations. Martha Ray's memorable portrayal, Walker Edmiston's versatile contributions, and the unexpected homage in the Warner Bugs comic book showcase the multifaceted legacy of the Bugaloos. From the creative decisions behind casting to the series' enduring influence on pop culture, these aspects contribute to the show's lasting appeal and continue to captivate audiences. The Bugaloos, with its distinctive characters and imaginative narrative, remains a timeless piece of television history. Martha Ray's initial reluctance to join a children's show almost prevented her iconic portrayal of Benita Bazaar in the 1970s TV series. Concerned that it would harm her career, Ray initially declined the role, but was eventually persuaded by her friend and creator, Sid Croft. Interestingly, Croft drew inspiration from their visits to a drag club in Miami, where a performer named Bibi Bazaar caught their attention. To entice Ray into the project, Croft incorporated the name into the character, giving birth to the memorable Benita Bazaar. This behind-the-scenes insight adds a fascinating layer to the Bugaloo's history, showcasing the unique blend of personal connections and creative choices that shaped the beloved series. The Bugaloo's journey into production faced its share of challenges, with budget constraints leading to the abandonment of planned towns and villains. The Super Square, Downtown with Big Bummer, and the Vermilion Villains and Uncle Emile's puppeteer antics remained unrealized concepts. These unexplored facets, though left on the cutting room floor, highlight the ambitious vision that Sid and Marty Croft had for the series. While the Bugaloo's adventures unfolded in Tranquility Forest, the creator's original plans hinted at a broader and more diverse world that never materialized on screen. From Martha Ray's initial reservations to the unrealized towns and villains, the Bugaloo's behind-the-scenes narrative enriches our understanding of this iconic 1970s TV series. The show's history is a tapestry woven with personal anecdotes, creative challenges, and unfulfilled ideas. In the end, the Bugaloo's, with its imaginative narrative and unique characters, stands as a testament to the creative spirit that shaped it a spirit driven by friendship, ambition, and the desire to bring something truly special to children's television. As we bid adieu to our journey through the whimsical world of those enchanting creatures from yesteryear, let the echoes of the Bugaloos linger in the corridors of your memories. The magic of harmony and camaraderie, interspersed with the subtle charm of each character, invites you to peer into the recesses of your own nostalgia. As you reflect on the kaleidoscope of adventures and melodies, we implore you to share the gems tucked away in the treasure trove of your recollections. Unearth those moments when the Boogaloos transported you to a realm where imagination knew no bounds. Whether it's the catchy tunes that linger in the recesses of your mind or the infectious camaraderie that sparked a flame of camaraderie in your heart, let your thoughts unfold. In this symphony of shared experiences, we celebrate the timeless connection that binds us to the Boogaloos. Your words, a testament to the enduring impact of a show that resonates across the corridors of time. So, dear reader, let the floodgates of memory open and release the torrent of your cherished moments. Thank you for allowing us to traverse this nostalgic landscape with you. Your time and interest have woven another thread into the tapestry of the Bugaloo's legacy. Until we meet again in the realms of shared memories, keep the spirit of whimsy alive in your heart.